Okay, so we've just had a look at informal letter vocabulary, and we're now going to move on to semi-formal letters. Okay, let's start with a quick introduction about this letter language. Semi-formal letter language is perhaps the trickiest of all to master. That's not because it's the most advanced, the most complicated, or anything like that. It's really because it needs to achieve the right balance between just enough formal and just enough informal. Not only that, but each semi-formal letter might have a different, let's say, formality weighting, depending on the letter's recipient and also depending on the purpose of that letter as well. For example, writing to your aunt and writing to your friendly co-worker, they'll both require a level of semi-formality, but it's not necessarily the same level throughout. The language that you use might be a little bit different. So there's no real rule here. You need to use your instinct quite a lot. But one thing which can help is just read, 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 read as many letters as you can, as many letters as you can get your hands on, listen to a lot of conversation English, and uh, yeah, over time that instinct will be sharpened when it comes to semi-formal language. And as a quick side note, this is the reason why there are fewer examples of semi-formal letter writing with regards to paragraphs and sentences within this course. It's because semi-formal language really varies depending on to whom you are writing, and that's why using examples isn't as helpful. What you're really aiming for here is to find the right balance between formal and semi-formal. That's why we're focusing on those much, much more, because then you should be able to find the middle ground a little bit more easily. Anyway, let's have a look at the sort of language that would appear. And you should notice as we go through this that it is basically somewhere between formal and semi-formal. Apology letters then. Okay, same thing. We've got some expressions here and I want you to pause the video, see if you can get those words in the right order. We're starting with easier ones and then when you're ready, you can click play to continue. Okay. Let's have a look at some of these. I should have written here apology slash condolence. Again, same thing. We're sometimes saying sorry. We're sometimes saying that we are feeling sorry for somebody else. Okay, so first one, I am very sorry for. Notice that immediately we have stopped with the contractions. The language is still quite basic perhaps, but it's appropriately basic. We're not going for a lofty vocabulary because it's not appropriate to do so here. I am very sorry for causing you such trouble. Okay, got that nice in-betweeny kind of language. Next one, I do apologize. Notice that we can add the word do just to emphasize what we are saying. And we can say I really do to emphasize it a little bit more. Uh, to keep it as simple as possible, we just say I apologize. But I do apologize has this nice balance there. Although I cannot erase what happened, I do apologize since, and then you might add whatever is appropriate here. I am sorry to hear nice and simple. I am sorry to hear about the news regarding your brother's redundancy. This one is more of a condolence letter expression. I am sorry to hear about. Thank you letters. Let's put some expressions on the screen with some examples. Okay, so again, pause the video, play it when you think you've got those words in the right order. All right, let's take a look. First one, I wanted to thank you for. Now this is that past tense that we're able to use here. I wanted to thank you for. So I was writing, I wanted to thank you for, and now I am writing. So I wanted to thank you for the flowers you sent last week, perhaps. Next one, to share my appreciation. We can also say show my appreciation as well. So for share or show, either one is okay. Here's an example. Notice we're changing the possessive here but I felt it was important for us all to share our appreciation with you for the huge effort you made toward the project. So change that possessive pronoun accordingly. Last one, your contribution did not go unnoticed. This is a nice one again for perhaps moving towards formal, further away from semi-formal, but it does still land in that nice middle ground. It is fair to say that your contribution did not go unnoticed and I will be speaking with the other directors to discuss a suitable reward. With that other language, maybe we're moving a little bit too closely towards formal, but it depends on the letter type. 
you know, it sounds like something to do with a promotion. Maybe we need to be a little bit more formal, even if we have a good relationship with our boss or the person underneath us. Okay, let's have a look at request letters. Could be thinking about the order of these words and the examples we have here. Okay, so have a look at these and when you're ready, you can press play. Okay, let's take a look. I have a question with regards to. Okay, no, no qualms with using the personal pronoun here. Semi-form, perfectly fine to do that. I have a question with regards to setting up a profile on the local system. Maybe you are writing to a colleague that you kind of know, maybe he works in IT. Next one, I wondered if you could help or assist me with. I wondered, moving a little bit more informal, but the assist me with, certainly formal, so again, you've got that kind of balance there. I am new to the sport, and so I wondered if you could help me with learning some of the basics. So this is maybe a sports teacher that you maybe don't know yet, but you're hoping to know later, and so you want to suggest that you two could enjoy learning together. And the last one, I am having a little trouble with. That's a nice sort of informal way of putting things, but because there's no contractions, it reaches that nice middle ground again. Since moving to the new house, I've been having a little trouble with meeting new people, and I wondered whether you had any tips. Okay, so that nice middle ground being achieved again there. Explanation letters. Okay, these ones are a bit longer. So what I've done is I've grouped the language, and I want you to see if you can put those groups in the right order. When you've done that, as always, you can hit play. Let's have a look. So explaining things here, I'd be happy, I would be happy, sorry, I would be happy to give you a few pointers, a few pointers, a few tips, basically. I remember how tricky it was when I got started, so I would be happy to give you a few pointers. Less common vocabulary being used, no contractions, again, that nice middle ground. There are a couple of important steps to follow, a couple of, moving more towards the informal, uh, nice and casual. Once you get started, it should be pretty straightforward. Having said that, there are a couple of important steps to follow. Firstly, da 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 da. And the last one, please do let me know if I can be of any more help. This is moving perhaps more towards the formal. I appreciate this might be quite challenging, so please do let me know if I can be of any more help at all. Notice the word help rather than assistance. That can stop it from moving too far towards the formal. Invitation letters. Same thing, long expressions here. So I group them together. And if you can put those in the right order, you can hit play. Let's take a look. First one, my whoever it is and I would be delighted if you could join us. For example, my family and I would be delighted if you could join us for a dinner party on Tuesday the 12th of September. Maybe that's a letter to some new neighbors. You've just moved into the neighborhood. It would be great to see you at or on, depending on the event or the day. It would be great to see you at the New Year's Bash on Thursday. It should be a lively one. Now, I don't tend to recommend adding exclamation marks in semi-formal letters, but maybe that one just about fits in here. You really need to be flexible with everything that I'm teaching you in this course. Be flexible, keep an open mind. Uh, there, are, there are always exceptions to any of the rules that I'm putting out there. And the last one, I would appreciate it if you could RSVP. Example, we will need to give a headcount to the restaurant to confirm the booking. So we would appreciate it if you could RSVP as soon as you can. Okay, again, no contractions here. RSVP, quite formal really. Basically, let us know whether you can come or not. But give a headcount, a little bit more informal. Not super informal, but just a sort of a regular informal. So again, we're trying to find that nice middle ground. Advice letters, you should recognize these from the last lecture. We've got some conditionals coming in here. And again, grouped the language together. So if you can put those groups in the right order, you can hit play. Let's have a look. If I were in your position, I think I would. It's just a slightly longer form of if I were you. But it's a little bit less informal. If I were in your position, I think I would. And again, notice that I think I would rather than I would. We're being less sure of ourselves, being what might be perceived as less arrogant. It's a little bit more polite. I would never want to tell you what to do also, uh, providing that same function. But if I were in your position, I think I would stay in your current job rather than risk this new one. 
nice and cautious. Next one, I am no expert, but perhaps you could try. So an example, I am no expert on these matters, a little bit more there, but perhaps you could try speaking to your tutor to see if he would be open to your suggestion. Notice in these examples, we're not being too forceful with our advice. That's, typically, we don't want to do that, particularly in a semi-formal letter. We want to be a little bit reserved with our advice. We don't want to be too arrogant. The last one, one piece of advice I was given was two. So here we're sharing advice. And the nice thing here is that we get to use the past and the passive voice as well. It is difficult to know the right thing to do in this case. But one piece of advice I was given when I was in a similar position was to draw up a list of all the pros and cons. So here, uh, a really useful way of bringing in more varied grammar on top of the nice vocabulary. So let's think about letter endings to end this lecture. So here are some sentences that will come before that last line. I will look forward to your reply. Notice no contractions. I look forward to hearing back from you soon. I would be very grateful if you could get back to me as soon as possible or please feel free to get in touch if you have any questions, okay? All of these probably weighted a little bit more towards the formal than the informal, but all of them should be good for a semi-formal letter. We finish with best regards. So as you saw on the informal letter, which is best, here, best regards. We want to complete that expression. Or kind regards, also perfectly fine. Finishing with all the best, another nice semi-formal letter ending. And then we finish with our first name and our last name, really depending on to whom you are writing and what the purpose of the letter is. So you've got to think about that and treat it on a case by case basis. So let's finish up this little three lecture sequence by focusing on formal letter vocabulary now.